Welcome to Fearless, Do More, the podcast where we dive into the minds of some extraordinary and fearless businesses and people, people who are challenging the status quo and who are helping to change the world of business around us. I'm your host, Jill Hunter. I'm the managing partner at Square One Law. On each episode, I'll be chatting to innovators, change makers, and trailblazers, where we explore the unique journeys of our guests. We'll delve into the fears they face, the setbacks they've overcome, the lessons they've learned along the way. We'll uncover the secrets behind their resilience and we'll find out what motivates them to keep going, even in the face of adversity. We'll also have a few laughs along the way too. My guests are all leaders who relentlessly pursue their passions, not only to create a better tomorrow, but who inspire us to push our own boundaries, those who fear less and do more. Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of our podcast. Um, today I have with me two entrepreneurs, um, a husband and wife duo, Antonia and Johnny from Nursen. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> welcome guys. Um, Nursen, for people who don't know what it is or what it does, um, in five words, can you tell me what the business is? Oh, five words is tricky, but <laughs> caring, effective, Skincare that gives back, which is six <laughs> words. I'm going to we'll you... we go for a yeah. hyphenated one there. So is it just another hand cream? No. no. <laughs> so I, I'll let you explain your story about yeah. why we say that. So um, yeah. So I'm a children's nurse, and um, I uh, not long after I'd qualified. So I qualified in 2009. No, 2008. And um, basically, it started work as a on a on a really busy uh, children's ward, um, hand washing loads, loads of IV antibiotics, um, and my hands very very quickly broke down. Um, they became so sore that I wasn't able to work, um, and ended up having to take two weeks off work um, in order for them to recover. And whilst I was off work, I started looking looking into what was actually available on the gen- in the general market. So things that were kind of um, highly effective, that wasn't steroid based, um, that was as natural as possible, um, and also um, something that was really fast absorbing and kind of bought loads of products, tried them all, didn't really find anything that worked. And at that point started looking into how we could do it. Well, how initially I could do it myself. Um, and we, the, when you were off for those two weeks as well though, we didn't just jump straight to a hand cream because that's like an, a given, like almost an obvious solution. But the problem for nurses is well, with you guys washing your hands 50, sometimes 100 times a day, uh, it doesn't take long for your skin to start to break down. But you have to do that to protect patients as part of infection control. So whilst, you know, it'd be amazing to come up with some other sort of incredible way to solve the problem, actually you can't get around the fact that nurses need to do this Mm -hmm. and so a hand cream was kind of like the intervention so you you were at home and we were saying well you've just spent three years working to become a nurse and there's you you, either you're gonna have to exactly exactly and so hand cream was like well actually do you know what if we could make something that you could take into work with you that's really effective that targets that exact problem Mm -hmm then that is quite a neat solution, even yep. though it sounds overly simplistic. The, the devil is in the detail, though. It took us three years to get the hand cream right. Yeah. Right, OK. Yeah. <laughs> so did you set up a sort of mini lab at home? Is that No, what, what well, that, it, it's funny because even people now will say, oh, do you just make it in your kitchen then? And I'm like, <laughs> uh, no, like, absolutely not. <laughs> um, so, so there were certain things that we knew had to happen in order for it to be... Um, be okay for use within the hospital ward. Um, We wanted to make sure it didn't like undermine hand washing because obviously you don't want to wash your hands, put some hand cream on and then have to wash your hands again because you put a hand cream on. So it had to be tested really, really rigorously. Um, And um, and we went to a lab initially and just said, I kind of reeled off um, a few uh, ingredients that I felt that um, I'd heard a lot about and we'd read a lot well, we about. Spent, we spent hours reading, like, geeking out over, you know, like <laughs> white papers and medical reports yeah. and stuff. Because yeah. we knew that contact dermatitis is the problem that most healthcare professionals mm. suffer from. And actually, if you really dig into it, you you understand that there's, like, physiologically things are changing in your skin when you, when you get that. Mm-hmm. Um, but most hand creams, like, they don't need to think about this sort of stuff. Uh, 
And the more that you actually understand the problem, then you can engineer your formula, your product, the hand cream, to really target a specific thing. So a good example is your pH level in your skin goes through the roof because it starts to dry out and break down. And actually, Nursum's hand cream it has a lower than normal pH level, so it's trying to rebalance it. So that's just one example mm. of like, these are all the tiny little things that it only takes yeah. takes time to kind of like figure it out. Mm -hmm. And then the, the, the moment really when we felt like we had something that was useful was you went back to work and you were taking it in with you, the, the sort of... The samples what, that the we samples. had made. Yeah. And, and not only was it working for you, but then other people on your ward were asking yeah. for it. Then other like nurses from other hospitals were getting in touch that you had no idea who they were. And it started to become like, you were like the hand cream lady. But, <laughs> yeah. um, and we knew then it was like, actually, do you know what? One, this is really good. But two, this is a problem that isn't just for you. Yeah. Like we then discovered nearly 90% of nurses and other um, healthcare professionals suffer the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. And just... it was actually a lot of it. A lot of what drove it was actually pure frustration. Yeah. It was a frustration that like all of these people, and it wasn't, and I wasn't alone at all in the problem, had this problem and that there wasn't anything targeted specifically for people, with for healthcare professionals that worked, which, that worked really well. And it was just, it, it was just, I can remember just feeling really angry because I was just like, this is, this is not right. Yeah. It's something so basic. Yet, like, if, if, if your hands, if you, if you don't have good, hands if your hands are broken down then you can't do the job that you've trained to do and that's not just nurses that's help that's that's doctors that's physios you use your hands so much yeah and like and you have to be able to 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 do that you have to be able to wash them you have to be able to protect your patients but then if you can't because of they, they're so broken down mm. then it was just it was just it's quite an weird. emotive subject i it's think so once emotive, you start to like yeah. get into it particularly for healthcare and also just like the embarrassment, like I was, what, 23, 24 when I qualified and um, and I felt like I had, my hands were just horrendous, like I just used to hide them and it, like I would go go to pay with like on a chip and pin machine or a lot and I, I'd be like, like kind of really conscious that the shopkeeper could see see my hands and would be like, oh, her hands are <laughs> awful. And like even a patient of mine commented, he was like, oh, what's wrong with your hands? Because they just looked horrendous, and it was just, yeah. I think, yeah. yeah so necessity, the, necessity really is the mother of invention in, yeah, yeah. in, in your it case. It's is, yeah. funny because I've heard that saying before, mm. where you know the best things are created by the people with the biggest need. Never really fully registered yeah. until until you had that. You're problem. in that position. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But but what were you doing at the time? Because you weren't a you weren't a scientist <laughs> or, or a, a, that or was a nurse very good or a, question. Yeah. How how long have we got? So I'd, I'd had various sort of businesses over the over that period. Yeah. One of the, my first businesses was um, like a range of first aid kits that we launched into Boots. And so my background is more like product design and development and more sort of entrepreneurial stuff. And to be fair, you pretty much looked after me in the early days in terms of like you paid all the bills and stuff. <laughs> if, on my, yeah, on my nose the number of times that you were like, "Can you get a real job, please?" <laughs> um, and I, I did promise you that it would, it would work out in the end. Um, so that was that was my background really. So I knew when we sort of said, "Well, actually, do you know what? Hand cream is probably a good way to solve this." I, I had already sort of had various contacts that I knew we could reach out to and stuff. So. Mm -hmm. So you did bring something to the party. I did, oh, I did yeah, yeah. Massively, massively. yeah. And I'm, I'm the one that actually loves reading like all the scientific reports. Yeah, yeah you and were stuff. the one that totally. Yeah, love to know how things yeah. work. Like it, pretty much anything, I'll love to kind of like see how it, how it's made and who makes it and. Yeah. You've got to have that inquiry in mind, haven't you? To oh, get into absolutely. the, yeah. the details, yeah, yeah. Of stuff you can gloss over. Yeah. Because you know if you're going to be selling. You know, to, to, to pharmaceutical companies or the NHS or whoever, they're going to ask you those questions Absolutely. and you're going to have to yeah. be able yeah, yeah. To, exactly. to answer them. And are you still nursing? Yeah, so I'm still nursing. So um, I'm a, a transplant specialist nurse now for children. But um, like I've, so I, apart from those kind of that time where I, I was off of my hands, I've pretty much worked throughout. But apart from having three children in between. <laughs> but um, like it was good because we it made a really good team because Johnny could then kind of run with the idea so then you joined Science City which is the which is um, incubator scheme yeah. 
um, which allowed um, investment into our idea and the kind of... The te it was the testing, for instance, being able yeah. to take it onto a hospital ward. Most hand cream companies or hand creams, they never have to think about that. But that's really expensive, important testing that shows that you can give the, you know, with a nurse and promise the way that we give it to nurses and other healthcare professionals, they can wash their hands, put an ursum on, and then go and help a patient, and it doesn't cause an infection control problem. Yeah. So we, we spent, that was pretty much most of what Science City was there to help us do, yeah. um, which was absolutely vital, because without that, we couldn't have launched the product. Yeah. Um, so that was, how long ago was that? That was probably about 12, 12 years ago. That's 12 years ago. Yeah, 12 years ago. <laughs> Slightly scary. So yeah, so that's, you know, it's, it's quite, a, quite a journey since then. Yeah. Um, something that people might recognise you two and think, oh, no, I know you two from somewhere. Is that you did <laughs> have Because we've just been around for so yeah, long. Yeah, well, it's not that you've been around for so long, <laughs> but you did have a, a, media, um, a media performance <laughs> when yeah. you, were on, you were on Dragon's Den. Yeah. yeah. Um, what, what was that like? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, was, it was the weirdest scary. experience like so it was it was in the middle of covid um so we um it was actually quite, quite a lot of the country was locked down um but because it was a business trip it was kind of deemed as okay for us to travel so we went to, down to manchester and um, where we we'd been asked to go and um for you, like basically yeah, take, take part take it, part it was i think it was the first filming of the series so thankfully we got to the dragons before they were completely frazzled because i think they spend hours in the studio yeah um so they're yeah, very we long days but it it was good because we had maybe two months or so to or three months to kind of like practice and remember all of our words and figures and stuff and i'm terrible with numbers like genuinely terrible so i remember at one point we had to go and discuss the deal at the back of the room and i was like I'd, I'd almost like forgotten like one I'd won in. <laughs> and I was like, I need a calculator, I need a calculator. Um, but it was good. It was great because we'd done all the hard work before we got to the Dragon's Den. So we knew that people really love the product and that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And then everything else was really just remembering what we needed to do. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's still it's scary. And it's so weird because you are uh, so, such familiar faces. Yeah. yeah. So when you go, so when you came out of the lift and you saw these people, because that was, even though we'd gone into the studios where it was being filmed, um, there was just these chairs laid out and then a couple of pairs of shoes next to the chairs. And like, and I was like, oh, grief, those are like, those Dev, Mead, Dev Readens and Sour Davies uh, shoes there, like just ready to go. And, um, and then, but then you hadn't done anything in front of them. So then when you came out of the lift, it was the first time you saw them. It's like you'd been sucked into the TV. It was so weird. <laughs> I bet it was almost like you were speaking to someone you knew. Yeah. Like, you know yeah, that thing where yeah. you see someone famous and you like mm -hmm. feel like you want to go and say hello to them. I have and, done that before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're like, oh, yeah, she does that all I the time. It's so embarrassing. <laughs> um, but like it's, and it's just because they're such a familiar face. So yeah. in a way, it actually made it quite nice because it was like, oh, I, I recognise yeah. you. I yeah. know your voice. Like, and and yeah, okay, I've never, we've never met them before. It just made it, it put us, and they were really great at putting us at ease, actually. And even though I think it was all consolidated to 15 minutes or so. Yeah, we were in for about two and a half hours. But was, yeah, two and a half, like wow. just being grilled about everything. Yeah. So for that grilling, I, I know you prepared in a quite an unusual way for your grilling. What? Uh, <laughs> what <was yours? laughs> yeah. So like, you know how you would learn a language. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I think this is how sometimes people learn languages. Uh, we had like all of the information that we needed to remember, like printed out, stuck it on the kitchen cabinets at home. And when we'd be getting our breakfast in the morning, we'd kind of like, you know, try and remember our lines or the numbers and stuff, because we had two little ones two little ones at the time, they would sit at the breakfast bar and we'd just pretend that they were the dragons. <laughs> How old were they at the time? Um, like, well, I think Harry was uh, maybe two. So Oscar, Oscar would have been like three or four. Three or four, yeah. yeah. So they just used to look at us as if to be like, what on earth? And to mummy yeah. and daddy, like, what are they going on about? Like, they just used to be but really steely-faced, kind of like, mm. well, that's what you need. Yeah, yeah, it was faces, good practice, yeah. good practice. They didn't give no anything emotion. away, like poker face. <laughs> But yeah, it's good. It was, and it, I think it, it's quite nice because like, I always try and like rope the boys into like the whole nursing thing so that yeah. they don't feel like it's like work and life or two, two, work and home are two separate things. So 
like we'll always try and like suck them into this and somehow but, yeah that was, that was quite good fun yeah. <laughs> well it obviously worked because you got how many offers five, five offers yeah. five offers yeah. which i mean i think you're probably in there only a handful of people who have who have yeah. had that um yeah. i think fantastic. it was just it was i feel like like with it being around COVID time mm. i think everybody's appreciation for the nhs and for healthcare staff had massively soared and mm. it um i think yeah, it was, well, we, we said a few times, like, COVID for, for us and the Dragon's Day, it's like the perfect storm. It was, like, just, like, everything aligned and actually people fully, the general public fully realised actually what it's like to wash your hands around 50 times a day. Yeah. And, and that what that does to the surface of your skin and then how it makes you feel. And, like, it, it sounds just so basic, but actually it's... It's funny as well because... We told this story so many times before COVID to so many people, and they were like, "Oh yeah, I kind of get it. I, I understand." But they're not know. fully there. But I just exactly. Don't think and then COVID is like, it. "Oh man, my hands are really knackered." Yeah. yeah. And then the penny drops, and that's when nursing became a lot more relevant. Because really, prior to that, it was kind of well known within like the nursing circles and stuff. And if you're a healthcare professional, but for the general public, it's not quite so such an a uh, thing that. Um, you know, but it's not there day to day, is it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And you just and like the way that every all of the kind of hand washing videos that are out on like on social and the TV yeah. and like getting you to do the certain things and talking about moisturization as well. It was then brilliant for us because then we were like, oh, we can just like like this. This is like we can help. Like we can act. We have a yeah. product already made that is for this exact purpose. Mm. It, the number of people though who were like, oh, you've just launched this since COVID, have you? And we're like, mm. no. <laughs> no, 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 we've been around for like 10 years already. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I suppose that's the thing, isn't it? People uh, people could have been quite cynical and could have yeah. been said there were some opportunistic, because there were people who were very yeah, yeah. opportunistic Absolutely. and yeah. all of sort of scandals around PPE and all of that. Yes, sort of stuff. exactly. Alcohol was, gels. <laughs> yeah, was that, how did you manage that? How did you sort of, or did uh, Well, the number of times that we had people sort of coming to us and saying, oh, we've got great alcohol gel that does X, Y, and Z. Do you want to put the Nursum logo on it? And we were like, absolutely not. Because like the, the, the reason and that the cure. We're, yeah, the reason that we're, we're here is to try and help counteract the mm. problems that come along because of alcohol gels. So we, we, we figured that out later, but COVID was, had pretty much gone before we found yeah. the technology that was that was right for us. Mm. I suppose that all comes back to your values as well, isn't it? And being really true to your values. Because if you've been looking at it purely from a well, here's an opportunity to make money. You totally. Absolutely. Straight down that route. Yeah. yeah. Do you Absolutely. think it helped that you're a husband and wife team? Yeah. Because I think so. Yeah. Well, we talk about nursing way too much sometimes. <laughs> we like... always joke that because it, it came along before our three children came along. Like, we always say that it's our first child <laughs> and it's 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 need, a needy child. Um, <laughs> and, and it's caused, I guess, there's been a lot of debates strong debates about like where it goes and, yeah. and 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 making sure that we we stick to our values and what we know what we feel is is right and true it, um, there's been a couple of good examples of it though where you kind of think do you know what because sometimes you have you have values and then they only ever really come out when you're tested mm. uh, and there was once during covid where i remember we had like I think it was like 10,000 of our hand, tubes of hand cream, which is our best seller. And um, we were, basically, we couldn't get any more stock for a couple more months. And it was, uh, I think we'd sold out of everywhere. I think Boots were desperate for it. And we sort of said to them, look, as much as we want to send it to you guys, we have to put it into the nurse and promise because at the time hospitals were doing a sh like call outs for sort of any support that they could get for the staff. And that was a great kind of moment where we thought, do you know what? Why are we even doing this? Like the nurse and promises are non-negotiable. So we can always figure things out with Boots later. And they were incredibly helpful and they understood why we did it. But we just put it all on a pallet and we're like, right, send it into the hospitals yeah. instead. I'm so pleased we did that because it was one of those moments where you think, do I take money or do we do the thing that we set this thing up to do in the first place, which was to help? people so what's and the nurse and promise then so every product we sell yeah. at retail we then provide a month's worth of uh free hand care back to a nurse midwife or other healthcare professional in the nhs wow. and so far we've 
uh, well, as as of the when was it the spring summertime this year, we'll have provided about a million promises so far. So um, yeah, and there's. <laughs> well, that must be really satisfying because you you you, you know what it's like to be yeah. there. You've got that lived experience of having yeah. that horrible exactly. thing happen to you. Yeah. And if somebody had come along and done that for you at that point in time, yeah. that would have been and I, changing. It, exactly. And I think it's just, it's that kind of, we were investing in our, in our NHS and our health, uh, in, in healthcare people, because mm. actually, like I've talked, I, I always get super passionate about it, but because you, you do use your hands so much for your job and you need to use your hands and like, actually it's a it's it's an occupational thing that yeah. the reason why your hands get so bad so if we can provide free hand care to to those people that really need it and it, it just it's it just makes us it makes it feel like we we can do we can do so much with that mm. and and just seeing it get like quite literally get into people's hands I think fills us with a lot of satisfaction because it's just like we're not just a hand cream we give back and we've got that philanthropic kind of mission and 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 center center of our company like in the central part of our company yeah and I think it's a lot important to a lot of people now isn't it having a business that they use as a force for good yeah absolutely yeah. Um, I think it's become it, it, you know investors are starting to ask those sorts of questions and mm-hmm. uh, and it, it's a strong business proposition it's not yeah. just a the right thing to do it actually it's a, it's a well, strong business proposition. yeah if you flip it as well like you know we could have set the promise up as a charity or something mm. but that the longevity of that is you do it for a while but then you have to you run out of cash and then you have to figure out how do you fund it whereas we were coming at it from a what allows us to provide the promise on an ongoing basis forever and that was when we realized actually we needed to create a strong retail brand because if that flourishes then the promise flourishes as well mm-hmm. so the two go hand in hand but the promise is always first and foremost, like non-negotiable. Um, sorry, my eye. <laughs> we'll get on to that in a second. But a good a good case and example is, at, like we've been through the mill quite quite a lot over the last couple of years, but um, see, seeing hospital staff, uh, like with the nurse and lanyards on or with a tube in their tunic pocket or on the nursing station, uh, is such an amazing feeling, especially people you've never met before mm. and they're, they're benefiting from it and it makes them feel good whilst they're at work. Uh, we never own up to it if we see nurse and we're like, oh, look over there. Yeah, we're just <laughs> doing quite yeah, much. Or just it's, a, like, it's quite a embarrassing if someone's like, are you guys, are you guys the nurse and guys? Um, and it doesn't happen that often, thankfully, but we're, was sort of like just quietly like happy to be able to see like nurse and like flourishing on walls. I can remember we were down at a wedding in like Cheshire or something like that and we um saw somebody coming out of the they must have been in a conference and they came out of um the conference room and they had a nurse and lanyard and it was the first time that I'd seen somebody with one of the nurse and lanyards on and I was just like you know when you just feel like so proud because you're like oh, that's, that's us that's ours like we've done that like that's our idea like we've 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 birthed this thing yeah. and and grown it and grow is that right grown it, yeah. grown it yeah um yeah so it's like like bits like that keep you going i think so what's what's next for the business then well we we're never going to stop trying to create really useful products i think people who have challenges with their hands you, you know like everyone mm. has challenges at, at, in other areas as well that's why we sort of say skin in need because the immediate problem we're trying to solve is for people's hands but we get asked a lot for um you know can you help us with my feet my lips the rest of my skin on my body that kind of stuff so we are working on products and we do have some products that are not just about hand care um but we were so pernickety about stuff that we launched like it's hilarious i mean we we set ourselves benchmarks as a team and it makes it really hard to launch anything because it's like, <laughs> oh my goodness, this is so hard. Yeah. But it pays pays off in the end because once it is out in the public, then it really delivers. And and it's like that seal of approval that we've kind of like spent ages thinking about this thing. Yeah, it's um, your brand integrity, isn't it? Absolutely. Like yeah. will associate you with with top quality. Yeah, yeah. Which is we what don't you just, need. Yeah, we don't want to just throw out rubbish, anything. do we? So that there's there's to kind of continue to help people and serve needs that maybe we're not meeting right now, but 
not that many people know about us in the UK. So we want to kind of double down on making nursing as good as it can be in the UK. And then we're starting to slowly look at Europe, potentially America, um, because there's millions of other nurses across yeah. other countries that also need help. So we'll go and help them. Huge potential. Yeah. Really exciting. And yeah. what about you two? What make what makes you tick other than other than nursing and sorting <laughs> that out? What's... Well, do you know what I think probably are to, it's funny because when people ask us like what do we do outside of nursing? Other than <laughs> like we've got three little ones that are like, I don't know, six, three and eighteen months now. Three feral boys. Well there's the answer. That's <laughs> yeah. what you do with it. Yeah. That's that's what I would love to say we oh we have loads of hobbies and stuff. It's like basically running around chasing after <laughs> yeah. our kids. We like to get them outside though. We kind of like they, we Fresh always air. we all feel better when we're outside. So like kind of going for a nice walk or we've like our national trust memberships and just or just like just letting them roam, I think, and it helps our minds as well, I think. So that definitely makes us tick. Um, what else? Music. Fre fresh air, <laughs> like try and be healthy. I, I've taken up swimming recently and it helps enormously yeah. to like... Open water swimming or oh, just I wish. I'm That'd be a, the next stage. Such a chicken when it comes to cold water. <laughs> yeah. I'm, uh, yeah, a nice warm pool, unfortunately. But it's just good because it's kind of like when things get the better of you, it's one of those things where if you don't concentrate, you end up mm. taking lungfuls of water in. So it's a, it's an hour of basically like, I have to concentrate on this. Mindfulness. Otherwise I'm going to drown. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's a healthier habit than turn into a bar of chocolate, which is usually what I would do. <laughs> and I love to run when I get the chance. But yeah. It's just, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you've, over the years, I mean, you started off at Science City and that was a sort of um, business nurturing um, experience and, and and I know you've developed your board over over time as well you must have had a, advice from all sorts of people um, what's been the sort of best piece of advice or worst piece of advice you've had over the over the years do you know what it's it's really tricky because there's so many bits of advice that you get over time um, I think I ce celebrate the small successes so celebrate like mm. yeah take time to stop along the path and just be like, do you know what we do? Let's like, we, we can pat ourselves on the back. Even if it's seeing somebody with a lanyard on, a nurse and lanyard on to the dragon's den. And like some of that almost seems like a dream in a way. And unless you like document it or stop and take take kind of note of it, then I think it could just easily just kind of get, get forgotten about. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think there's- So many entrepreneurs, I think that you listen to like other, podcasts and so yeah. on that where people have got to the end of their like entrepreneurial journey or whatever and they sort of say well actually the fun bit was the building it and the challenges and the unknowns yeah. which actually when you're in it are slightly scary and sort of nerve-wracking but I try and remind myself of that that actually if you can just get happy with the fact that things aren't always perfect all the time uh, and you can be happy now then then you'll be happy in the long run sort of thing so mm -hmm. But that that makes it sound like we always have like, you know, we figured it out, but we're not sometimes we lose our, <laughs> our, our oh, cool. sometimes, yeah, yeah. Totally, yeah, we do. What's then, the sort of, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I was just going to say, well, what, what's, the, what's the sort of biggest mistake that you made along the way that? Hmm, good question. <sighs> I mean, I think we all make mistakes and hindsight's a lovely thing, but I think, I don't think there's anything that we can, Put your finger on and say I wish I'd done that differently yeah uh, do you know what actually non work related I wish that we'd had and we often say this wish we'd had our kids earlier right just because like up until Oscar our oldest one came along like I, I was pretty I was happy with bumbling along and not really doing much and just happy to chill out and, and then when he came it's like a proper kick up the bum <laughs> um, in, in a good way you know like you feel like you've got yeah, some meaning and, exactly yeah. um so in a slightly selfish way if we'd have had the kids earlier then I might have been a bit more motivated <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it definitely they definitely motivate us and I think yeah being a husband and wife team it definitely has its its, its downfall sometimes but then also it also has its like motivators and in, in the fact that like it both drives us because we want essentially to show our boys like what what it is to like have something that you're really passionate about mm. but also what it, it is to grow something and also to um I guess it's just that positive positive the, like that that kind of positive Influence. do mentality where it doesn't matter what you do in life like you can 
like as long as you try and try at your hardest it's that's that's what we want to kind of instill in them so I think it's messages like that but also from us like there's always going to be self-doubt there's always going to be like oh well we can't do it or somebody's doing it better than us or um or we're not good enough or whatever it might be and it's just like trying to work through that and be like actually do you know what I can try and if if I don't try then that's the worst thing to do so what's yeah okay it's scary and it's scary to get out there and it's scary to kind of put put everything on the line for something that you, that you believe in but it's if you didn't do it then like you'd constantly be thinking well what I should have what if yeah, yeah what if yeah well I mean I think you I think you're brilliant role models on on all sorts of fronts you know you, you you're working parents struggling lots of different things and, I, and I'm a real believer you know you can't be what you can't see so other people who are starting out on their journey now who were at the point you know 12, 12 you were 12 years ago will look yeah. and say you know well there's 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 two people who've who've really learned as they've gone along and created something really really special mm -hmm. so I, I think you know well done to both of you and Thank I'm you. absolutely Thank delighted you. that you've had the time today to come and uh, come and speak, to, speak <laughs> with me you know when you when you do, you've got all those other things to do as well thank, thank you. you very much for your time no, it's a no, pleasure. Pleasure. thank you for having us yeah thank you you're very welcome <clears throat> thank you for listening to fear less do more all of our guests come from a diverse range of backgrounds